This week in Jamaica Now, more on the controversial withdrawal tax. The finance minister to say this week if there will be a rollback. Government meets with the gay community, but the opposition leader wants more than that. Cattle farmers welcome animal tagging in Pretty Larceny Crackdown, but say there is still deep concern. And why an environmental group is taking the government to court. The details of these and other stories coming up after the break. Reach anyone, anywhere in the world with the Gleaner Online. Rich media, interactive banner ads, dynamic page wraps. With over 319,000 video views per month, place your video ad online and target select countries, states, and even cities. Increase. Target. Track. I'm Damian Mitchell, and this is Jamaica Now. The Finance Minister, Dr. Peter Phillips, will on Wednesday tell Jamaicans if the government will make any changes to the $6.7 billion tax package. There have been mounting objections to the tax on withdrawal from deposit-taking institutions. Last Thursday, the Finance Minister announced that he would be conducting a review of the measures and will update the country this week when he closes the budget debate. Hours later, the opposition leader, Andrew Holness, in making his contribution to the budget debate, told the Prime Minister to withdraw the tax or else. Mr. Speaker, these taxes are counterproductive to the growth agenda and that is why most countries have abandoned them. Meanwhile, the Finance Minister has dismissed arguments that the government is hiding the amount of money it owes to suppliers. In his contribution to the budget debate, the opposition spokesman on finance, Audley Shaw, accused the government of not being forthright about the arrears. Mr. Shaw told the House of Representatives that he received a document showing that the government has built up arrears of $47.87 billion. But according to Mr. Shaw, the amount owed could be higher as data from all ministries, departments and agencies were not included in a document he was quoting from. Mr. Shaw stressed that until the full picture is given, the credibility of the budget will be in doubt. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller says she has sent one of her ministers to meet with members of the gay community. But the opposition leader Andrew Holness wants more than that. Holness, contributing to the budget debate last week, says there is uncertainty in the gay community as to whether the Prime Minister will honor her promise to review the Bugri law. He has called for the Prime Minister to have Jamaicans vote on the issue in a referendum. The Jamaica Red Pole Cattle Breeders Society has welcomed the proposals by the Agriculture Minister aimed at addressing the problem of farm theft. According to Chairman Martin Hopwood, desperate cattle farmers reeling from persistent farm theft are anxious to try any new measure that will cause relief. The Agriculture Minister Roger Clark has announced that this year every head of cattle will be electronically tagged and issued a passport. He also said a DNA database has already been developed. But while welcoming the move, Mr. Hopwood said there is still concern about the approach of the police towards Brady Larceny. Unfortunately, Mr. Clark doesn't have control over the police force, you know, so we need the cooperation of the police as well as the microchips in the cattle. Give Roger his due, he has many, many times he has spoken out about it, but the farmers don't get the impression that we are getting as much help from the police as we could, as far as I'm concerned. Prosecutors have revealed that they have a video recording of prominent medical doctor Jeff DeFord telling a policeman he tried to bribe that he is a man of influence. The revelation was made as Dr. Ford appeared in the corporate area resident magistrate's court last week to answer to the charge of attempting to pervert the course of justice. Assistant Director of Public Prosecutions Natalie Miller says Dr. Ford was secretly recorded as he offered money to an investigator to have criminal charges dismissed against two Surinamese men who were held in halfway tree with 500,000 U.S. dollars. Prosecutors say in the video, Dr. Ford also boasted to the police investigator that he was a man of integrity. The two Surinamese men were a week earlier cleared of criminal conduct when senior resident magistrate Judith Pusey instructed that all charges be withdrawn against them. 
However, the Financial Investigation Division took possession of the cash and is now seeking to have it forfeited to the state. The dispute over disclosures on the Goat Island project is to head to the Supreme Court. Frustrated by a lack of information, the Jamaica Environment Trust, JET, has applied to the court seeking a judicial review of the decision of the Minister of Finance to grant a certificate of exemption to its request under the Access to Information Act. JET says the minister issued the certificate even as it was awaiting a hearing before the Appeals Tribunal of the Access to Information Act. China Harbor Engineering Company has proposed building a transshipment port on the Goat Islands located in the Portland Bight protected area. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, has promised to strengthen security arrangements following another fire at the Riverton Disposal Site. The NSWMA says a full review which will involve members of the Jamaica Defense Force, the police and the private security company contracted to Riverton will be done. Arsonists are believed to be behind fires which raised for several days and caused smoke nuisance to communities. The NSWMA was moved into action after the National Environment and Planning Agency warned that it would suspend the environmental permits for the landfill if steps were not taken to secure the property. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at leanerjm.com. You may tune into Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell, and as we go, a glimpse at the recent march in the corporate area by advocates for the decriminalization of ganja in Jamaica. This is the original Don Dada of the surviving, the survivor of the wheelers. Robert Marley, Peter Tosh, Juno Bradway, Beverly Kelso, and this is yours too, Don Dada. Jabon wheelers still surviving, still celebrating, still doing the things that people need to be done in as far as rights, justice, and equity is concerned. Chris Blackwell, ask me if you want to anywhere about ya. I'll do anything for anybody about ya. I make billions out of ya, sir. billions out of ya, sir. See him for telling that, you know. Good, yeah, sir. Yeah, man, what you mean, brother? Because I make them know, sir. So yeah. Put it in there and let them understand big time. Don't that I see you make it, show them a company and come for tell you. I'm like, I do that. But no, they are no Peter, no, they are no. A high there. Because nothing about picking them, they are paid no mind, no notice. With them there.